Hey everybody, welcome to The Obsession. It's another good year here in southern Wisconsin. It is. And we're going to start the show off. Prairie dog hunting. Prairie dog hunting. Uh, a few of the guys went uh, to South Dakota this year, prairie dog hunting. JR and Steve and those guys. And then uh, Zach took one of his buddies and they went out prairie dog hunting. So we're going to be showing you guys that part of uh, what's going on. We're going to talk a little bit about what the deer are doing here in Wisconsin. Uh, what we're seeing, we're going to go through our hit list. And I, what I mean by our hit list is the whole staff. <laughs> Not just our hit list that Brian and I hunt together quite a bit and his son Cole who's behind the camera right now. But our hit list for the Obsession TV show. Looks like uh be a few of them. That, <laughs> there's that, a few pretty good I've got to, I got a couple on mine, but there's always one that will pop up that probably hasn't been seen on camera yet. Yeah, there's there's usually quite a few. Uh, you guys are going to see some pretty spectacular deer. Uh, one of the staff members has got some pretty big bucks down there on the Illinois-Wisconsin border, but we'll uh, see how weather or whether or not they get he gets an opportunity to take one of those. But uh, as of right now, you know the deer in Wisconsin are hitting the greens. Everybody knows they're on the beans. They're on uh, alfalfa. They're on our alfalfa plots and stuff like that. In the corn. And they're in the corn. We almost ran one over in the truck, coming, <laughs> coming, coming down the edge of the corn. It jumped right out front of the truck, about what five feet? Yeah, it was close. It scared me. It scared pretty, me to death. Pretty bad. And you got to stop in the middle of a field for deer to run, yeah. run across. But but our particular property that Brian and I hunt together pretty heavy with coal. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a doe problem, so yeah. we'll be taking those out right away, for sure. Yeah. It's, uh, from what I've been seeing, there's a healthy crop again. Yeah, yeah, a lot of twins down there in that particular property again, southwestern Wisconsin. But uh, like I said, we're going to start the show off here with some prairie dog hunting. Then from there, we're going to jump to our hit list deer, uh, show you guys the hit list deer. So this week's show is probably going to be about 20 minutes long. Uh, we're going to show you some of the equipment that we're using. Uh, this year, we will be having some advertising throughout the show. Uh, some of the companies that sponsor us. This is actually going to be set up with our TV show, so you guys are going to actually see what the TV show is all at the same time, web show and the TV show. So be sure to check out Rush Up Doors. Subscribe to the channel. Channel. Uh, we'll be doing a show every two weeks. Next time we come back, we'll be bow hunting. Oh yeah. Two weeks out, we're going to Nasita. Uh, the end of this week. Uh, Brian and I and Cole and a couple other people will be up there shooting broadheads at the Wisconsin Bow Hunters uh, to see the shoot. There's their annual broadhead shoot. If you guys want to check out a really cool hunt it's, or a real cool uh, it's, shoot, it's cool. You know, it's a good time. It, you know, it, you know, you're out there with broadheads. It, you're with uh, the camaraderie of you know bow, the bow hunter bow hunting world seems to be you know just seems to be really great people to be around and. It's always a good time. I've been going now for 20 years. And, yeah. You know, it gets you, especially with the broadheads, it gets you in that, I guess it gets you more into that mood of the hunting mood. You know you're a week closer to uh, to actually getting out there to start hunting. Actually only a week away from the hunt. Yeah, it's only a week. Uh, some of the people, you know, a lot here in Wisconsin, bear season actually opens this coming Wednesday. So you'll start to see a lot of the bear hunting pictures up on YouTube and up on Facebook and all of that. So watch for that kind of stuff but we're gonna get the show started here with prairie dog hunting thanks for being with us it's 15 16 years now so we appreciate all the support hope you enjoy the show
Brush Outdoors. It is the first weekend in June. Uh, we are in southwest South Dakota for a prairie dog hunt. Uh, today is our second day actually. Uh, yesterday was a beautiful day. The wind was low. The temperature was great. The sun was out. It was a little overcast. But unfortunately we only saw about 30 prairie dogs between five guys all day long and we were out here for about 10 hours. Uh, unfortunately this time, uh, this last winter, South Dakota had a real bad winter. They've had a lot of rain. They had four inches of rain last weekend and that killed off a lot of the prairie dog population. So Although that's good for the ranchers, it makes for a kind of a boring show uh, when you guys want to see some prairie dog kills. So we're going to do what we can today. Um, it's another beautiful day out, but unfortunately we've got a lot more wind. It's currently about 67, 68 degrees outside, and the wind is gusting between 15 and 20 miles an hour. So we're going to do what we can, get as much as we can on film. Unfortunately, uh, with the, the low dog population, the closest prairie dogs we've been seeing are in that four to 600 range. Um, a couple of us had a thousand yard kills yesterday and that's great there goes another one that's great uh, for us behind the rifle but unfortunately with the video cameras you're really not going to see much at a thousand yards you can't even see the little dot uh, that would be the prairie dog so we're going to do what we can to get you guys some closer shots um, and get some good video so stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoy the show now we have an um, intercept this heavy barrel two two three Right on him, you're at two inches low. He's moving. High right. How far? 468. 468. I'm on him. Just over his shoulder and he's in the hole. I gave, <laughs> I gave him too much. Nice. I, you Literally, it was like this. Right over his shoulder. I, I gave him too much. Nice shot. Oh, oh, holy crap. For, so for we are shot. at 1,000 yards. We've got three. On a hole. We've got a 20 mile an hour wind coming from our, well, actually at this angle it's coming straight at us. Left side of the hole. Your distance is perfect. Just over them. There you go. They're still there. Still one standing though. Oh, I can't believe you didn't hit him. He's still standing. Yep, just 
a hair. Right in front of him. Wow. Just over his right, left, right shoulder. Is that it? He might be dead. He's not moving at all. You might have got him. behind the hill it'll pop out any second hold on clear oh! Got him. so Steven what's it like to hit a prairie dog at a thousand yards Challenging. Iraq Seed Company, celebrating 20 years. From our number one selling perennial G-Force to our tree stand blend with a two to three year stand for shaded areas. From our best selling annual Ballistic to our new Triple Play. Max Iraq Seed has the best seed for you to take the best whitetail of your life. MaxIraq.com when we're in the hunt here at the Obsession, we have to have total trust in all of our equipment. QAD supplies that trust. Quality Archery Designs has been manufacturing exceptional and innovative archery products since 1992. Quality is not just in their name, it's their mission. Be sure to check out all the Quality Archery Designs products at QADINC.com. In all weather. That hunt of a lifetime, the tag you've been waiting years for. Trust Vortex Optics Performance. When you need to make that shot of a lifetime, you're right on the animal you need to be hunting. Trust Vortex for the shot of a lifetime.
I block the wind. The cold. I block the rain. Noise and smells. I block the voice in your head that says, go home. Scent block. Apex gear. Strong, durable, dependable. When the animal you've been chasing all season approaches, you need to make that fast acquisition for target movement. Make the shot. Apex for the hunt of a life Arizona archery equipment. Whether we're shooting 3D or hunting big game animals here in North America, we here at the Obsession trust AAE. That looks good. For the best veins on the market today, trust AAE. Zach Kern here at Thrush Outdoors. We're in South Dakota today with my buddy Luke. We're gonna try some prairie dog hunting. We're going to the Williams Ranch. We're getting pretty close, about five miles away. So hopefully we have some luck. Beautiful country out here. Nice, beautiful day. Hopefully it don't rain. We'll see what happens. Well, the government did say, uh, you know, we, we, we know you're gay. Why don't you confess? Zach Kern here with Rush Outdoors. We're at uh, Mark Williams Ranch, I believe, in South Dakota. I'm going to do some prairie dog hunting here with my buddy Luke. He's set up. i got a little bit more to set up. I'm going to try the FTS for the TACT cam today. Film through the scope and see if I can get that to work. Prairie dogs are sure popping out. We kind of look like they kind of went back in their home and they rolled up here. So, wish us luck. Should be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. That's a king one. Got him. Good You're shot, right. bud. You're Good right. shot, bud. Right, right there by the be, foot. There might be one down. Just missed him by an inch. Just a little right. Got him. Got him. I'm not like too close here, am I?
Ready? Got that one. Alright, Luke, whenever that's a nice big one, aim at his like aim at his front chest. There, I got him. Number six, I believe. Got him. Oh, he's running. Did something. Just ran. Got him. The other one's. Carl and um, the Vortex crew with the Vortex scope and the binoculars and rangefinder I have because they really help me pinpoint these things down. So stay tuned. Hopefully, you can enjoy some good footage.
here in southern Wisconsin, the deer are basically, what are you seeing on cameras right now? Uh, still seeing uh, a lot of does and fawns, uh, getting uh, nighttime pictures of bucks, early morning, sometimes daylight of bucks. Uh, depending on the temperature. Depending basically. on temperature, uh, time of day, obviously, but uh, I've got a couple of nice ones that I've that I would consider hit listers for me on camera right now. Uh, you know, like anything else, they have to be there during daylight and and uh, at the right time. So, <laughs> but I don't bank too much on that they're there right now, and the opportunity could arise that they could show up at any of them times when at the right time during daylight hours eventually. Well, the big thing right now. So the first two weeks of bow season, big thing to me always is cold fronts. If we get a temperature drop of 8 to 12 degrees, I don't care if it's 80 to low 70s. If you got 80 degree, 80 degree, and then 70 degree, you should probably be hunting. Yep, absolutely. Uh, barometric pressure is something I also watch. Uh, a lot of people don't believe in it, but when the temperature comes down and the pressure goes up, you better be in the tree. You should probably be in the tree. That's something that we've noticed for quite a few years now. Um, and it'll even bring the bucks out early in the in the year also. Uh, green beans obviously are going to be uh, hitting for the first two weeks. Uh, the acorns have started to drop on the properties that we have. I've actually started to see the deer moving from the fields. I was actually filming Friday night and uh, the deer were actually in the field in the beans early and they left the field to go and I'm assuming eat acorns in the woods. Um, fairly early. They were probably heading into the woods by 7, 7.30 p.m. and I had no deer out in the green bean fields. So uh, that should tell you something about food transitioning right now and kind of where we're at. Uh, we're not expecting any rain anytime soon. So that might affect the way things are going to cause deer to move. Uh, water holes will be somewhat uh, constructive if you've got a water hole between bed and food. And it's in the woods a little bit and you've got to stand next to that water hole that may be productive uh, just a few things that i would watch for so anyway here in two weeks we're going to get with you guys hopefully we'll have some bear footage hopefully you'll have some mule or mule deer <laughs> thinking about mule deer that's all i'm thinking about right now but uh, hopefully we'll have some white tail footage whether it be bucks or does like i said here in the obsession we always take does out early so you're going to see a lot of the QDM with uh, doe management and we'll talk about why we're taking out a certain amount of does and the age group of does uh, on certain properties. So you will see me shoot doe fawns and uh, the reason for that is a mouth is a mouth and I want to save the two, three and four year old does for breeding. So I will shoot doe fawns early in the year, uh, especially when we want to take a few out of the property. So you're going to see that happen here and uh, if you have any comments or any questions be sure to put them on YouTube channel here and uh, we'll answer them as soon as we can get at them uh, probably within a few hours of when you guys actually put them up. So, thanks for watching the obsession. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks.